Good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing today? It's so great to see you today. Welcome back to Creative Clean Living. Arlene Booth here with Coffee and Tea with Lena B. So what are you drinking this morning? Are you having coffee or tea? <laughs> I am drinking something cold. It is a warm day here in Florida. It's already, I don't know, it feels like 90 degrees, but I'm not sure what the temperature is. That's something I didn't look at this morning. But this morning I am going to have me a glass of iced tea. And um, I think some of you have seen me already sharing something about these Tessie's teas. I have a friend who has these teas and they're just awesome. I love how instant they are. And I'm only going to use a half of a packet because it's quite strong for a full one. So until my viewers jump on here and see that I'm live, I'm going to go ahead and stir myself my tea. Jump on when you jump on, say hello in the comments. Look how that's nice, getting nice and um, yellowish. It almost looks like lemonade. <laughs> almost looks like lemonade, but it's a ginger iced tea. Now this can be drank hot as well. So, but I'm drinking it cold and I only used half of a packet. Look at that. There's still a lot in there, enough for another cup. So I really love the mint one that they have. She only has two flavors, mint and ginger. So if any of y'all want to try these teas, put tea down below in the comments or shoot me a message because I am mailing out sample packs. You just pay the shipping. So she, she gave me a whole ton of this stuff to try and to share with my friends and try to sell it for her. So we will see, but I just love it. Um, and I have been learning some things. I never really enjoyed ginger before, but it really does have a good, um, yeah, you can taste a little bit of the spice as it goes down, but it's not real strong. Thank goodness. Cause I do not like strong ginger flavor. Did you know, did you guys know that ginger is an anti-inflammatory and, um, an antioxidant. And do you know that those properties are capable of helping prevent or fight infections? A wide variety of infections and threats to the human body, the human immune system. So it's just ginger is a really good aid to help in, um, digestion as well. And, um, any food that is high in antioxidants or anti-inflammatory are, you know, when they have those components that are high, um, it can play a role in really helping the body reduce swelling and prevent the spread of serious illnesses like cancer and heart disease and diabetes and things like that. So that's what the health professionals say, but who knows, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's just, wow, just a matter of drinking some tea. Okay, we got this. So say hello. I know there's some viewers on here, but you're not saying hi. So say hi in the comments, please. I always love to know who's joining me. And I don't know why this suddenly turned dark a little bit. Did it turn dark for you guys? It's weird. I don't know why my lighting suddenly turned a little bit darker. Um, I am out here in the bright, beautiful day, and it is a gorgeous Florida morning here. And we are talking today about um, just before the storms of life. Like, it's inevitable storms are going to come, right? I had a storm hit me yesterday that out of the blue, completely wonky, had no idea it was coming, but psh, it kind of threw me for a loop. And you know, are we really prepared when storms come? Let's talk about that for a minute. Are we really prepared? Good morning, Lynette. Hey, thanks for saying hi. Um, are we really prepared when the storms come? And what can we do about it? Like, what are we supposed to do? 
Um, our verse for today, our key verse is 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So Jean, the lady who wrote this book, my friend from Antigua, this is a really amazing book, Safe in the Midst of the Storm. Um, you can find her Facebook group if you are not a part of that. It's a free group and it's called Safe in the Midst of the Storm. Um, she offers some great encouragements in there too. So she writes in her chapter five, says my school day memories include the big gray hall alarm. When the alarm would ring out, each class of students walked to single file to their positions in the hall. The teacher instructed everyone to get down on the floor below their lockers. Each one was instructed to stay there until there was further instructions to go back to class. The procedure was done often to teach safety during a storm. Before life throws a curve in your direction, you need a plan. It is a reality of life that you will face storms. You will face disappointments, trials, and hardships. You live in an earthen vessel of clay. How you handle these times of struggle will determine your outcome in physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So obeying quickly develops trust in your relationship. As responsibilities grow in your life, sometimes do you do you feel that it you struggle with fitting in time with God, fitting in time to pray, fitting in um, those moments, right? D does anybody ever feel that way? Do you ever feel like, okay, I didn't squeeze it in today and then tomorrow comes and you didn't do it then tomorrow and then the next day and the next day and come by. Here you are a few months into the year when you vowed at the beginning of the year that you would read the Bible through, right? <laughs> Anybody make that resolution in the past? Well, we need our closeness with Jesus. You and I need that. We crave it in our inner beings. And um, the reason for that is God created us that way. He created us to long for his embrace, to long for his fellowship. Daily spending time in prayer develops our communication with him. Worship time and our devotions develops respect and admiration. Obeying quickly develops trust in your relationship. So here's a little three-piece formula to, um, for the protection of storms of life. First one is prayer, the second one is worship, and the third one is obedience. Prayer, worship, obedience. The scriptures clearly instruct us in Deuteronomy 11, 18 and 19. They say, therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit in your house and when up. No one is responsible for laying up the word of God in your heart, but you. No one is responsible for binding the word of God in your hands or before your eyes, but you. The devil will try to steal the truth about God, especially when you're going through a storm. So Jean says, hymns I grew up knowing all my life would leave my mind. Simple facts such as times and dates would leave my memory as well. On one occasion, I was confused about what year it was and was determined to find out. I went throughout the house asking different ones what the current year, what was the current year, and they all said the same thing. It felt as though I had woken up from a coma. I went and found some mail and looked at the seal to verify what the date was. I had lost time, memory, and facts. The devil is out to steal truth or knowledge. The truth is Jesus. The truth is what shields us. He is our buckler. A buckler is a small round shield held by a handle or worn on the forearm. Psalm 91.4 says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
2 Timothy 2.15 again says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to become actively involved in learning God's word. It will be your buckler. I don't think I've ever, uh, ever really um, put that together before in my mind, the buckler part. <laughs> So this is good for all of us. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will shield you from the turbulent wind, winds of the storms of life. You need to live out Ephesians 6, putting on the whole armor of God and come to an understanding of who we are in Christ. You need to familiarize yourself with what to do in case of a life storm, not only for yourself, but for your brothers and sisters. Like the drills in our government facilities, your spiritual awareness of the need to sound the alarms will be the salvation of many. It is essential to prepare yourself for the work of the Lord. The National Weather Service sounds out an alarm over the public airwaves and local fire departments sound their alarms throughout the community when there is severe weather approaching. During severe weather, my family knows we have to go to our basement for safety. We stay until we know it is past us. Sometimes it is scary as the sounds of the wind of the storm linger and the effects of the storm close by, come close. Being in a safe place keeps fears under control. It is important to have a place of safety picked out before bad weather comes in. Your children or your congregation or those you are responsible for should be familiar with what to do in case of a storm. It is equally important that they know that they must go to God for safety when a physical or an emotional or spiritual storm may occur. God is our shelter. It is good to be familiar with the security of godly counsel from a pastor or spiritual friend before life crisis occur, and they will. Storms are to be taken seriously and with caution. When you're going through a life storm, you need to be still and wait upon God for instructions. Jesus will be in control if you let him and if you put your trust in him. You must realize when you are going through a life storm, it is important to check with him whether it is safe to make a move in any direction. He knows best. You cannot trust your decisions when you're in the middle of the storm. Like an environmental noise storm, the noise is loud. Things are unsure, but when we put our trust in Christ, though there is trouble around us, we can trust in him. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Matthew 8, 27. In Psalm 91, 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. During the storm of my nervous breakdown, I could not trust my judgments. I had to put more trust in the Lord, and I am thankful for a godly husband who led me to safety over and over. You might be surprised to find that in Christ's closest circle, his own disciples, there was a lack of understanding how to pray. <laughs> Wow. In Luke 11, 1, we read, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain pl place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Sometimes you need Jesus to just teach you. Teach you to pray. In prayer, you need to believe his word and stand on it and claim it for your situation. Amen. As we wrap this up, um, let's see what this last part says. Um, as we wrap this up, you need not only to read God's word, but know it and use it against your enemy. You need to study to find God's will in every situation and circumstance of your life and trust him. As you live your life, you must be connected to the higher power, speaking of God the Father who is in control over everything, to stay in a safe zone 
and to meet your every need. Remember, God answers before we even ask. Remember, the devil is a liar. He wants to bring fear and torment. I like to often remind myself of the end of John 10, 10, where Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He wants us to live victoriously before, during, and after the storm. Did you get that? He wants us to live victoriously before, during, and after the storm. It is your heavenly father's desire that you live safe in all life situations. So our key verse for today, another one, I think I put um, in the, the scrolling one there, 2 Timothy 2.15. But there's another one too, which is great to memorize. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Psalm 46.1. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to drink a sip of my tea. I'm going to drink it like this. I don't need a straw today. <laughs> this actually tastes really good out here on this windy, hot, sunny day. And knowing that it's going, it's going down burning just a little bit, but that's what ginger does, right? But knowing that it's good for me, I'm going to drink it anyway. <laughs> so let's pray today. Let's pray. I don't see any prayer requests there, but let's pray for, um, there's so many needs. I actually just found out yesterday that, um, there was a, a man in that used to work here in our town in Wendy's and, um, he had just gotten married and, um, he died on Saturday. He got hit by a car, hit and run. It's awful. Um, and, you know, found out that Ashley Blackman, uh, the guy that came across her lane and sh that she hit, um, I guess he's paralyzed now. And um, Ashley's just in a lot of pain, too so many surgeries and putting broken bones back together. So let's remember them in prayer. Um, let's pray for, you know, the storms in our life. I mean, a lot of people are dealing with physical storms and deaths like that. Um, some friends of ours up in Pennsylvania, um, some kids in my kids club, their mom passed away last week. Um, so a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt. Um, but then there's people that are losing jobs, you know, there's people that are, um, just losing work and, um, still trying to, to maneuver and feel for God's presence in his next step. I like that this said here that he's going to guide you in the next step. He's going to guide you in the next step. He's going to guide you wherever, whatever open doors are, are right before you, he's going to guide you into those. So may God give us wisdom for those doors, right? <laughs> Let's pray for wisdom that God would give us the wisdom when doors closed, that he would open up the next one and that may we see what they are and be open to it and know that, um, when we be still and know that he's God, he's helping us through those storms. Amen. I'm just holding on to that promise today, you guys. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Tuesday you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for um, the fact that you help us through the storms, Lord. And you know that um, you are our rock and our fortress. You are one that we can depend on. Um, that you will help us before the storm is even happening, Lord, to prepare. And, um, Lord, I pray that you would just continue to help those that, uh, that need your strength today and need your specific help and guidance. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, give them the desires that they need, the, the help that they are looking for, Lord, I pray. Lord, give them the strength, those that are feeling physically 
distraught and, and in pain and feeling um, just really distressed and maybe um, depressed. Lord, I pray that you would please just come alongside them, Lord, and help them and show them, Lord, that you're with them through this storm. You're with them. Um, you're with us, Lord, through the storms. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I don't have any storms because I do. And Lord, I'm so grateful that you're with me in my storm. And um, like you're, you're just here as a friend and a father and you care. So I thank you for that, Lord. Um, I pray, God, that you would just go before us today in this day, whatever it is that we do. Um, help us as we clean things out and get ready and spring clean. Many are spring cleaning right now. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would help us, Jesus, to, to just uh, move forward daily in the tasks that you have us to do. May we honor and glorify you in everything we say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Miss Lynette, you're amazing. <laughs> cheers to your day. Cheers, cheers. I'm going to send you some of this tea, girl. I think you'd like it. All right. Well, again, we've been reading um, Jean Roll's book, Safe in the Midst of the Storm. So really, really good book. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the depth of it. And um, thank the Lord how he provides and how he's going to help you before the storm to get ready. Whatever your storm is coming, or maybe you're already in one, God's with you. So share this video with someone that um, could use the encouragement, you guys, okay? Share this video because that's what it's here for, to help encourage us to creatively live cleaner in our mind, in our spirit, in our homes, and um, may God bless your day today, all right? I love you guys. Thank you for watching and have a really blessed day. Talk to you later. Bye.